public speaking is very much a reciprocal relationship. So it's not just about having a strong speaker. It's actually about the relationship that the speaker manages to establish with the audience. Structure to the point. Thought provoking. It's relatable to the audience. So we have to think about the audience here. You have to find a way as a speaker to connect with your audience. And you connect with your audience by speaking about something that is relevant to them. If it's completely irrelevant to them, then it doesn't matter how capable you are as an orator, it is not going to gel with your audience. Ergo, they're not going to get anything. Ergo, it's going to be a bad experience for all involved. Getting to the point and not rambling on can be challenging. You need to be able to condense whatever it is that you're speaking about into one sentence. Can you condense it into one sentence, into one idea, <coughs> into a 30 second blurb? If the answer is yes, you probably have a pretty good grasp on what it is that you're working on. If you cannot, chances are you're not even clear about it. And if you're not clear, your audience is not going to be clear. Passionate. Passionate. So we just think about it. You know, we look at people who are doing whatever they happen to do, and if they do it with a certain amount of vigor, a certain amount of passion, at this point, even if it's something that we're not particularly interested in, that passion is infectious, it's contagious, and it can excite us as well. Other characteristics. They're audible. You can actually hear what they're saying. That's an important one. One has to be clear. One has to be articulate. <coughs> the audience has to be able to hear you. Confidence. Others. Confidence. Why is confidence important? Because you like believe in what you're talking about, and then if they believe you, then mm -hmm. you're speaking to your audience. That's precisely it. If you're talking to them and you do not appear credible, then your audience is not going to pay attention to what it is that you're saying. If you're credible, you're believable, you're convincing, you're persuasive. But only if you're credible. You can convey credibility via confidence. The way that you present yourself physically, mm. stuff like you know, eye contact. Mm. Poise. What kind of poise do you have? How do you carry yourself? Are you someone who stands confidently? Are you someone who makes eye contact? Are you someone who's busy shuffling through their papers and looking down all the time? So poise is extremely important. Now we see all of this, and we say, okay, so these are the qualities of a good lecture, but how does this relate to the qualities, the characteristics of a strong speaker? Well, passion is obviously going to hit with the provocative nature. So if you're passionate, then chances are you're going to provoke people. It doesn't matter because not everyone in the audience is going to agree with you. Now, when it comes to audibility, as we said, this has a lot to do with pace. And so are you audible? Are you keeping an appropriate pace? Is everyone following you? We look at confidence and poise. All these have to do also with structure, relevance. Why I say that this has to do with structure is that if you think about it, a confident speaker is a credible speaker. And a credible speaker is someone who is organized because they come in and they have a particular trajectory. They're starting with point A and they're ending with point Z. There's a trajectory that they're going to follow. And they make this trajectory clear to the audience so that the audience can follow with you as well. So as I said, we're gonna be working with tips. So there are five tips that we're working with. And the first one is that the relationship between a speaker and the audience is a reciprocal one. And a strong speaker can influence directly how an audience feels. Here's a question for you. When does an audience begin to assess a speaker? When the speaker enters the room. Why is that? Well, if you think about it, what do we have on our face? We have a couple of eyes. And what do these eyes allow us to do? These eyes allow us to see things. But we also have a brain, and we also have a heart. Right? And we also have all of these different senses that are active at every moment of every day. So the second I open that door and walk through here, the second you as a presenter at whatever talk you're giving walk through, everyone looks at you. Their eyes are on you. 
And what are they judging? They're judging the way you dress. They're judging the way you walk. They're judging the way you carry yourself. They're judging your level of organization. Did you sit down here with 16 papers, start ruffling back and forth? Everything is being judged. And that is going to influence your audience. So tip number two, how you carry yourself, is invariably going to influence your credibility and your persuasiveness. So keep in mind how you dress, how you walk, your poise, your level of organization. I need to pay attention to my hand gestures. I need to pay attention to eye contact. Because what happens if someone is not looking at you? So you're talking to your significant other. And you say, hey, were you with so-and-so last night? And they're like, no. <laughs> <laughs> they look you in the eye, then at this point they become more credible. So there's something about when we make eye contact, when we make eye contact, people tend to listen a little bit more. Because they feel like somehow there's a rapport there between the two of you. There's a relationship building. How do I begin my lectures? With music. So there's music playing. One thing that has happened as a result of this is I've become that music guy. There's something to it where you're distinguishing yourself from others. This is now different. And what happens when you distinguish yourself from others? People pay attention. And you want people to pay attention because if they're paying attention, then they're listening. So, oh, tip number three. Provocative thinking, lateral thinking will distinguish one speaker from the next. I simply mean being playful, being creative, taking yourself beyond the limits of what is expected of you. We have not been looking at speaking style at all. The point is, the strength of a lecture, the strength of a talk, the strength of a presentation begins before you stand in front of your audience. And too many people, when it comes to public speaking, will focus on what is the speaker doing in front of the audience when they're speaking. And what I'm saying to you is what's more important is the run-up to that. If you know what you're talking about, you'll be confident. The basis of any strong speaker is knowledge, because knowledge will allow you to feel confident, which will convey credibility, which leads to persuasiveness. We need to begin with knowledge. Now the thing is, we have to understand about knowledge, is that there's always going to be someone in the room who knows more than you. I'm not worried about that. And you need not worry about that either. Because being knowledgeable and confident and credible and convincing does not require you to have the best possible solution, the best possible presentation, whatever it is. What it requires is for you to actually believe in whatever it is that you're advocating. Because if you can convey that belief, if you feel that, then you are conveying something to your audience that they can latch on to. Do I believe in whatever it is that I'm trying to convey? If the answer is yes, then I will appear credible. And I may even appear convincing. And that will be enough. So to believe in yourself, you have to start off with knowledge. You've got to know your subject. Simple as that. So read the books, read the articles, talk to people about it, Develop an in-depth understanding of it. But then practice giving the presentation. So, tip number four, knowledge is essential to achieving confidence. Confidence is essential to achieving credibility. Credibility is essential to being convincing. Do not shy away from experimentation. Experimentation is essentially the lifeblood of any speaker 
wants to grow and develop their skills. You can keep doing the same thing over and over and over and refining your ability to do that one thing. Or you can experiment and you can learn to adapt. And so if there's one characteristic that I would throw up here, it would be adaptability. You need to adapt to your audience to make it relatable to them. Because at the end of the day, how strong your moot or presentation is, is intimately tied to your audience. If you can only develop adaptability through practice and through experimentation. You have to take chances. Many times, you will fail. But you grow from that, you develop from that, you improve from that, and then you learn how to excel. So the fifth tip is that experimentation is key to growth. If you say something personal, you feel closer to everyone. So now, when you're in a study group or going to give a presentation, you know that if you can find a way to insert an element, a kernel of you in it, you'll have taken the first step towards developing a relationship with your audience, with your team, with the judge, with your fellow mooters, whatever it happens to be. And then you already feel closer. Strong speakers are not people who are just born strong speakers. It is a skill that they develop over time. So you practice some things, and they work, and you practice some things, and they don't. Many of you have seen me tell a joke and get no laughs. <laughs> My question is, how's he going to save it? <laughs> you find a way to save it. You adapt to a given situation. So this skill happens as you practice over and over. You'll flop, you'll make mistakes, you'll kick yourself for it and you'll think afterwards, ah, I should have done that. That's fine. That's healthy. That's what you want, to be thinking how you could do things differently next time. Not just differently, better. So the exercises that I'd like you to do, and this you do it on your own time, you can do it as a group, do it with the people that you've met, you just look at the tips and you say, this is what I'm going to focus on, and you don't need to do it for long. Five minutes a day is all it will take. So you've done it for 30 seconds now, then you try it for a minute, then you try it for a bit longer, and you look at the tips and you say, this is a tip I'm focusing on, this is a tip I'm focusing on. Then you combine two, then you combine three, and then you bring four together and you bring five. And then once you get to the fifth one, then you say, you know what, there are plenty of other people out there who have written about public speaking, I'm going to read what they've written. What I'm also going to do is to look at people. You're watching them, and you're taking notes. So when I'm watching, when I'm attending any kind of a panel or a talk, I'm not just listening for content, I'm paying attention to style. So I can improve by watching others and picking up from them. You can become very skilled at whatever it is that you do, but you have to do it. And as I like to say, if you do nothing, nothing will happen. But if you do something, something will happen. And if you're practicing and now you have a program, now you have a plan of action, now you have some kind of structure, if you're actually interested in becoming a stronger public speaker, you can do it. If you do something. So, I'll see everyone at the next workshop. Good luck.